Section A.3 is about polynomials, and we're going to look specifically at factoring polynomials. So factoring is expressing a polynomial as a product or multiplication of multiple polynomials. So the basic steps to factoring is if there's any common terms, a greatest common factor, factor that out first, and then determine the best way to factor it, whether it's a special product, something that you know the shortcut to, whether it's a quadratic trinomial, or you have to factor by grouping, maybe it has four terms, and then factor it completely. So here are three special products that you should have memorized, especially the difference of squares and the sum and difference of cubes. Those are extremely important. So go ahead and pause the video and write these down. So if you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, it factors into the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term times the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term. Perfect squares, so this is if it's of this form. Sometimes you'll recognize them, sometimes you won't. Other, If you don't recognize it, it just factors. You can just use your normal quadratic factoring. But this is very important, the sum and difference of cubes. So unlike the difference of squares where it has to be subtraction, for the sum and difference of cubes, it can be addition or subtraction. So if you have a perfect cube plus or minus a perfect cube, it factors into a binomial times a quadratic trinomial. So the first binomial is the cube root of the two terms. And then if you look at this, to get this part, it's you square the first term, multiply the two terms together, and then square the last term. And then the way that you remember the signs is looking at the sign from the original polynomial. It's the same sign, opposite sign, and then always positive. So this is very important. Make sure you have especially these two memorized. So all three of these polynomials are special products from that previous slide. So go ahead and pause the video and factor these three polynomials. So there's two ways you can do this first one. You can either look at it as 16x squared minus 4 is 4x quantity squared minus 2 quantity squared. So that's a difference of squares. So then it's the first term and the last term with a plus in the middle and a minus in the middle. So 4x plus 2 times 4x minus 2. Also, you could have seen, oh, I have a common factor, so I could factor out the 4, and I'm left with 4x squared minus 1, which is also a difference of squareds. It's 2x quantity squared minus 1 quantity squared. So keeping that 4 out in front times 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. So if you haven't done 2 and 3, go ahead and pause the video and try those two. So the second one is a sum of cubes. So this is x quantity cubed plus 3 quantity cubed. So we have x and 3, and then squared together squared, you get x squared minus 3x plus 9. And same sign, opposite sign, always positive. The last one is a perfect square. You have 5x quantity squared plus 2 times 5x times 3 plus 3 quantity squared. So it becomes the binomial 5x plus 3 whole thing quantity squared. Now we're going to talk about factoring not special products. So here we have a quadratic trinomial. Like always, the first thing I look for is if I have a common factor. This one does have a common factor of 2, so I'm going to factor it out. It's not required. It just makes your life a little bit easier. Our goal for when we are factoring quadratic trinomials is to not do a box method or a diamond method, but to be able to just go from your quadratic trinomial to your factors. It's especially easy if you have a leading coefficient of 1, 2, or 3 here because there's not many choices. Remember, what's here and here has to multiply together to be 3x squared. There's only two things that multiply together to be 3, and that is 3 and 1. So these have to be a 3 and a 1, because 3 times 1 is the only way you can get the 3 up here. The back end is actually easy on this one as well, because there's a 1. There's only one thing that multiplies together to be 1, and that's 1 and 1. So this one's pretty easy. And then because everything is positive, both of my signs are going to be positive. So I end up with 2 times 3x plus 1 times x plus 1. So on this polynomial, we have 9y squared plus 9y minus 4. You could use that same method. It would take a little bit more work because there are more options that things multiply together to be 9 and 4. Uh, so we could do something like a diamond method. So when you do a diamond method, you're looking for the number that multiplies together to be, in this case, 9 times negative 4, and adds up to be the positive 9 in the middle. 
So I know if I'm multiplying together to be a negative number, one number has to be positive and one number has to be negative. Because I'm adding together to be a positive number, a positive nine, I know that my bigger number has to be positive. So if you don't know them right away, you can always start guessing and checking. I always start with one and work through my factors. So if you look at the factors of 36, you have negative 1 and 36, that does not add up to the positive 9 that we need, so that one doesn't work. Negative 2 and 18 also doesn't add up to the positive 9 we need, but negative 3 and 12 does. So I probably wouldn't even need to go on to these last two. I've already found my numbers. They're going to be positive 12 and negative 3. So the way, what we're going to do with these two numbers is we're going to split 9 up into 12 minus 3. So we're making 9 more useful as these two pairs. And now we're going to factor by grouping. So we're going to look and see in these first pair, what can we factor out? What do they share? So they share a 3y, so I'm going to factor a 3y out. If I take a 3y out of 9y squared, I'm left with another 3y. If I take a 3y out of 12y, I'm left with a 4. So now if I look at this back pair, what can I take out of negative 3y minus 4? Well, the only thing I can take out is a negative 1. So I'm just going to take a negative 1 out, and I'm left with, if I take a negative 1 out, I'm left with a 3y plus 4. So when you're doing these, you want these two always to match. They have to match when you're doing factor by grouping. So now that they match, they're actually a common factor. So I can factor out that common factor. So if I factor out a 3y plus 4 out of this first term, I'm left with a 3y. If I factor a 3y plus 4 out of the second term, I'm left with a negative 1, so this is my final answer. So here's another polynomial, 2x squared plus 14x plus 20. Go ahead and pause the video and factor this polynomial. So I factored a 2 out to start because everything shared a 2, and I was left with x squared plus 7x plus 10. Well, the only thing that multiplies together to be x squared is x and x. 10, you have the option of 10 and 1, or 5 and 2. I know that these two have to add up to be 7, so I pick 5 and 2. So this last one is a factor by grouping, so I have no common terms to factor out, but it's not a, it's not a special product, and it's not a quadratic trinomial. So I'm going to look at factor by grouping. There's four terms, which works for our factor by grouping, and I want to do the same thing that we did on the trinomial, but we just don't have to split up that middle term. So if I look at the first two terms, what can I factor out of x cubed minus 4x squared? Well, they share an x squared. If I factor an x squared out, I'm left with an x minus 4. If I look at these back two terms, what can I factor out of a 2x minus 8? They share a 2, and I'm left with an x minus 4. So just like we talked about on the previous one, these two have to match for factor by grouping. They do. So I can factor that out, x minus 4, and I'm left with x squared plus 2. So this method works even though it's not a quadratic trinomial. I have factored this cubic function into x minus 4 times x squared plus 2. So this has been a review of factoring.